Welcome to 5 Minutes in the Word, a daily devotional in the Word of God. Mr. Gary, we read in Scripture uh, of instances where it's good to be guided. Uh, for instance, in Acts chapter 8, when uh, the eunuch invites Philip to come up into the chariot with him, um, and Philip asked him, do you understand what you're reading? And the, Phil, or, and the eunuch's reply was, how can I unless someone guides me? Uh, and uh, here in uh, the Psalms, uh, too, we, we still pick up with that same idea of being guided. So what can you tell us about uh, Psalm 23? Okay, it is a, a, a beautiful psalm, and truth be known, you probably could have 10 different guys talk about it, and they'd find 10 different points, all of which would be valid. Mm -hmm. not, not saying that they'd be off the mark, but uh, for me, uh, first of all, I noticed the Lord provides. So in the opening verse, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You can only say that if everything you really need is provided. Now, mm -hmm. I, I do emphasize the word need because... Yeah. Most of us can find a lot of wants that we don't have, but, but he takes care of that. You go on down to verses 5 and 6, and he actually says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So he even provides when when my enemies are making it difficult for me, mm -hmm. he'll take care of me. Now, how does he do that? Well, I'm always going to have something to eat. I mean, that's the literal way to look at this. Mm -hmm. But again, the point being, it doesn't really matter what your enemies do. The Lord is still going to be able to take care of what you really need. And I'm going to keep emphasizing the word need, need. You know, yeah. for my own sake, because I need to think about that that we're talking about needs. But then he doesn't just provide. He chooses the best path. Uh, you know, sometimes there are two ways to go, and neither one is exactly wrong, per se, but one is better than the other one. And so when you look at uh, verses 2 and 3, he says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I know when Teresa and I make trips, uh, sometimes we, we literally map out and say, okay, which way will we be able at, to stop when we need to? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, one way may be a little quicker, but if there are less spots to stop at, we don't go that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the, the Lord, and he recognizes, again, the needs of each of his sheep. Uh, one, one is that they be able to rest, to lie down, but then notice the second one goes right with it, in green pastures. So you can you got something to eat. Mm -hmm. And then beside still waters, well, I've been told, and I never have uh, raised any sheep or anything like that, but I've been told uh, that sheep, will not drink from from water that's moving quickly. They will only drink from basically still waters. And so the Lord recognizes the strengths and the weaknesses of each sheep, and he responds accordingly, which, by the way, fits the New Testament. When you think about uh, what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, that... Uh, the Lord's not going to let you be tempted above what you're able. Mm -hmm. He's aware of it. He's going to take you down the right path. Now, we don't always choose to follow very well. That's our problem. But he's trying. Mm -hmm. That's what his goal is. And then he protects us from danger. I look at verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I know that this psalm has been read at gravesides probably more than any other single passage in all of Scripture. And that's fine, but it's only fine if we realize this psalm's not talking about the dead guy. Mm -hmm. It's talking about the people who are there who are going through a very difficult and therefore potentially a very dangerous valley. Could they lose their faith because of this? Well, sure they could. Mm -hmm. uh, could they go through turmoil and troubles because maybe the primary breadwinner is now gone? Well, of 
course they could. But but the Lord knows how to take us through. Yeah. There's one other thing that I think is very important here, and that is that this is among the most personal psalms that were ever written. You know, you started, you know, verse one, my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down. He leads me, besides that he restores my soul, he leads me. Uh, I walk, I will fear, no. Uh, uh, you're with me, you're on your staff, comfort me. You prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David is not making a statement for his children, mm -hmm. for his wives, for even for the nation. He's made it for himself. The Lord's going to take care of me. Obviously, yeah. To me, those pronouns, they really bring forth the idea of a relationship that David and God had together. That's it. 